Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Mikey and in today's video, we're going to be talking about the University of Manitoba and how you can actually get into the University of Manitoba. Now, my friend Andrew was very kind enough to help us out with this video. He has a lot of great tips that you're going to actually see in this video and how he was able to get into the University of Manitoba as basically an Ontario resident. Now, if you guys do have any questions about University of Manitoba, how to apply to it, what you need in order to get into the program, feel free to leave it down below in the comment section or reach out to me or reach out to Andrew if you guys have have any questions i make videos basically on study tips tech that students could use in university and how they can actually use their time wisely with technology and after this series i'm actually going to be vlogging my day in the life in the hospital as a research student so right now i just finished my third year of science and i'm actually going to be starting research in the hospital kind of full-time ish and I'm basically gonna vlog my days in life there. So if you're interested to see how that is, don't forget to like and subscribe to this video or like and subscribe in general because it does help this channel a lot. But without any further ado, let's get started with this video. Hello, my name is Andrew. I am a third year medical student at the University of Manitoba. I was asked to give a brief little talk about my experience in applying to medical school, my time in medical school uh, for this video for my good friend Michael. Uh, and yeah, let's get started. So uh, a little bit about me. I started uh, my undergrad out at McMaster University in Hamilton, Ontario. I did my uh, Bachelor's of Health Sciences honors there. I really enjoyed my time out there. It was a program that was very geared towards the career that I was uh, going for, which was medicine. I've always wanted to be a physician all my life growing up. I liked how it was very uh, group-based, problem-based learning, a lot of group projects that we did. Uh, courses were very interdisciplinary between other faculties. Uh, courses, things like health policy and critical appraisal scientific literature really kind of helped uh, develop the skills and tools that I really needed to excel in medical school. And so I did that for four years. And then I took a year off in which I came back to Winnipeg. I'm originally from Winnipeg. I grew up here. And yeah, I did a little bit of research during that time. And then I started medical school after that. When I was in first year, obviously it was a bit of a transition in the pace and um, kind of the material uh, goes by really fast. Uh, so it, it is a lot of work, um, but it's enjoyable. Just kind of like an overview of the day you can expect the University of Manitoba. You would have classes pretty much the whole day. Sometimes I'd have classes straight from nine to five, uh, which would be very long days. And uh, it's kind of a mixture of didactic learning. So a lot of, you know, your classic lecture based style and obviously some tutorials in there to kind of reinforce the material that was learned with some simulations and labs so things like clinical skills where you group up with a some of your classmates and you work on the physical exam or history taking. Um, there's also anatomy labs for first year medical students as well. So it's a, it's a good mix of different styles of teaching and learning, which I think is uh, very important because we all learn differently. Um, and I think the one thing that we do a good job is, is we cater towards that. With the way we kind of develop our curriculum, it's um, what we call uh, like module based. So you start out with like, let's say cardiology, so you do that for three or four weeks. So you got, you know, you start the course, you already have your midterm in about two weeks and your final is two weeks after that. So it's really fast paced. Uh, and then you go on to the next course. Um, so you, in your first year, you can expect to write about maybe 30 to 35 exams uh, simply by just the pace. So it's really important that it's not kind of like, you know, your typical undergrad where you have midterm season and final season. You're always having midterms and finals. You can have a final in September and a midterm in December. There's obviously some pros and cons to that. I, you know, pros is that it's not a lot of material, I guess, as opposed to having the whole semester into just one big exam as some medical schools do. Obviously the con towards that is you got to keep it up. Like it's uh, every day you got to start studying because otherwise you fall behind very quickly, especially if you've had a day of like nine to five classes, that's maybe like seven or eight lectures. Um, if you just say, I'll take two days off then you're already about 16 lectures behind. Um, so you got to just always be on the ball. And yeah, and I think that's really helpful. Um, sometimes, when we slack off, it's not really the best way of learning. So the kind of the best way of learning is to keep reinforcing every single day and moving forward with that. So I really, I actually prefer this kind of style of learning and teaching. So I really had a good time with that. Uh, I'm not really much of a procrastinator. Uh, I guess specifically about the campus life, uh, obviously, you know, with COVID, uh, there isn't much of a campus life, but like before that, 
Um, there was, you know, it was it's a building kind of in downtown Winnipeg, closer to the north end of the city. So University of Manitoba actually has two campuses. The main campus is in the south end of the city, and the health sciences campus is in the north end of the city. It's a sm the smaller campus. It's just where medicine, dentistry, pharmacy, and the rehab sciences are located. It's a very nice building with a very nice library and atrium, place to just hang out and chill. And obviously, there's a lot of things going on always, but typically most of the events would happen in the main campus at the Fort Gary campus, which is in the south end of the city. So sometimes uh, students who are in the health science faculty sometimes feel a bit a little left out from like the things that go on in the main campus. But obviously you can go back and forth um, if you have time for that. And in terms of the student culture, you know, obviously in medical school, it's, um, it's, it's different than most, you know, like you're probably your undergrad, you know, you have a class of like 700, and our class is 110. Um, so it's very small. So we all get to know each other very well. Um, and we're all here to help each other. And I think that's kind of the main purpose. Like it's not so much now, you know, the competitiveness of trying to get in and all that. It's more so, hey, let's, let's help each other out. Like I'm really good at, you know, cardiology. My friends are really good at neurology. Hey, can you teach me a little bit about that? So there's always kind of, uh, you know, support system, you know, you, Grab yourself a good group of friends. A lot of us even even share notes of each other, share Anki cards. So there's so many different ways that we all help each other out just to pass through the exams because that's kind of what medicine is like. And you know these classmates of yours, one day they'll be your colleagues too. So one day, you know you might be a surgeon consulting an internist, um, and they they were your classmates. So you know we're gonna, you're going to see them as they progress through your education and throughout your residency and even. Possibly, even if you end up in the same location when you're both attendings. So yeah, our program is a four-year program. Um, and as I mentioned before, it has a mix of didactic learning and problem-based learning, which is what I like. Um, so your first two years are mainly kind of, you know, in the lecture, you're kind of studying, taking notes, doing exams, and then repeat. Um, second, you do a little bit of more kind of patient interaction. You have these things called uh, clinical-based learning sessions. Um, where you meet up with a patient who has a certain condition. Usually it's kind of related to the unit that you're on. Uh, and you're kind of taught with like a, a attending with you and they kind of show you around. So it gets to be a little bit more patient interactive in second year. Uh, and then third year is when you're now kind of uh, doing a little bit of work now. So now you're part of the team, you're seeing patients on your own. Obviously you have to review with either the resident or the attending. Um, but you're part of the team now. You you have responsibility. You have to you know show up early, be engaged. I would uh, encourage that everyone to make sure that when you uh, get to that stage, that you kind of have you know a general idea of what you'd like. But at the same time, I think it's very important that when you do get into your rotations and that's a few years down the road, that you keep an open mind as well. Uh, for example, for me personally, I when I was going through my rotations, I was very geared towards one specialty. And then when I did it, I was like, you know what? That's not what I want to do in my life. I'm thinking of something else. So it's it's really important to go into medical school in general with an open mind. I know some people come in with a very, you know, I have to be a neurosurgeon or else. And sure, it could be your calling, could be your passion and good for you. But if you don't necessarily know what you want to do yet, that's totally fine. That's what medical school is for. Personally, for me, I'm kind of leaning towards either family medicine or emergency medicine as a career for me. So in terms of kind of getting into medical school here at the University of Manitoba, uh, it's a very kind of objective way of getting accepted. Uh, so what I mean by that is, again, my information might not be as up to date as probably websites. I encourage you all to go into umanitoba.ca slash admissions slash medicine, I think, um, to keep up to date because things change constantly, especially with COVID and the way, you know, the interviews done. But basically, you're on a scaled score. So you have your GPA, you have your MCAT, and you have your interview. And then all the points you get from all that kind of just equates into out of 100. And then based on that, the people rank you uh, and if you get in or not. Yeah, uh, our school is very kind of MCAT heavy, I would say. So they really like having high scores in MCAT. So make sure you do really take that exam seriously. I know it's, it's a pain. Uh, I hated it. I spent three summers trying to do it um and yeah so every time you know the the better the score the better your chances so it's simply just keep uh keep at it uh it's a tough summer it's a really 
long exam. And yeah, and I think with the GPA, that's all. I mean, it goes without saying, make sure you don't get high grades and everything. Um, but I think with our school, we have this uh, concept where if you, after four years of your uh, undergrad, you get to drop your worst 30 credit hours or your worst 10 courses. So that really helps. And then with the interview, uh, at least when I did it, it was uh, multiple mini interviews. So it was like 12 stations. Uh, and then you go rotate around. So each station is a scenario and you kind of answer the question, you move on to the next one. Uh, so you have pretty much 12 different people interviewing at the same time, uh, which I feel is kind of most medical schools have that form of interviewing the MMI. There's obviously pros and cons to that, you know, Pros, as I say, if you know one station didn't go so well, it's okay because the next station, the person doesn't even know who you are. You can start over from scratch and then kind of move forward. Um, but, this, but at the same time, it is a very uh, exhausting experience. You know, it's about two to two and a half hours of constantly like moving around and answering different questions. You have to be prepared. Um, and so that takes a lot of practice. And um, the interview is not something you can just wing it. It takes a lot of practice. It takes a lot of self-reflection too. You kind of have to look to yourself and see like, okay, like what kind of experiences can I bring? What can I do to stand out to, so that others um, can notice that like, hey, this is a candidate that's good for medicine. So like, cause everyone's gonna have good answers for their interview, but what are your experiences specifically in your life, whether it be through volunteering, through your extracurriculars, through just life in general, what makes you unique? That, like as a medical school, they should accept you. Um, I think that's one of the, best advice I can give when you're preparing for an interview is to really, really self-reflect and see what are the, why you want to do medicine as a whole. Um, and I think uh, that's a very good question to ask yourself. Um, and to find out, you know, like why the more genuine your answer is, the better it reflects in the interview. In terms of tuition, you know, tuition at the University of Manitoba Medical School is actually one of the cheapest, which, which is really nice. Uh, it's about 10 or 11K a year. So it's uh, very cheap. The application is actually very straightforward. Um, it's probably the easiest application, I think, in all of the medical schools in Canada. It's just, you know, what's your name, your date, your birth, and when you did your MCAT, your GPA, and submit. We don't really have like the whole like OMSAS thing where you have to submit all your extracurriculars and all your research and all that. We don't really uh, need to know that here at the University of Medical. You can definitely talk about that when you're in the interview, but there is no kind of scoring system based on your extracurriculars. Um, if you have a master's or a PhD, you can get a few extra points for doing academic work like that, or if you publish several papers. If you're from a rural background, you can get an extra few points for that as well too. So in terms of kind of uh, extracurriculars or the volunteering that I did, so I volunteered at a local hospital for several years. I did quite a bit of research and that's kind of one of the reasons what I liked about Mac Health Science, that there were opportunities for me to do that. Um, and so I engaged in that. In fact, I continued on with it even while in medical school, some of the stuff that I was doing at Mac. And then I was doing obviously research in my gap year as well. So I did have a, a pretty decent uh, research background. Is it necessary? I wouldn't think so. I've got a lot of my classmates who have never done any kind of research whatsoever, but it helps. Uh, for sure it helps if you kind of have some academic background to it, especially, you know, when you go into residency, uh, there will be an expectation for you to publish a paper, especially depending on which residence you go into and things like that. So it's kind of good to get a little bit of a research experience, I would say, if you want. If, you, if that's not your thing, then that's totally fine. But make sure to do something that shows, like, you know, like it's something medicine related. So whether it be, you know, volunteering at a local soup kitchen or volunteering at a hospital, care home, just something to kind of be like, okay, this person is interested in health and well being of others. And because that's what medicine is all about. Like, you know, you're, you're going to be seeing people at their lowest state, you know, when they're sick, when they're not feeling well. And I think that's an honor that we as students, residents and fellow attendings um, need to remind ourselves constantly that like, you know, this is a privilege that we get to be able to treat someone and make them feel better and more well. Um, so just, I guess, general tips on how to get into medical school. I think, you know, my biggest tip is just, you know, be yourself. Like, uh, you know, just like I said before, just make sure you really, really reflect on why you want to do this. It's a long career and uh, I'm sure most of you know this. Uh, you know, I have to do an undergrad and you have to do four years of medicine and then residency can be anywhere between two to seven, eight, nine years, depending on how sub, sub, sub specialized you want to be. Yeah. And then after that, like, you know, even when you're becoming like a full-on attending, the learning doesn't stop. 
medicine changes constantly as we've you know seen with the pandemic the standard of care today might not be the standard of care tomorrow i've seen it myself in the hospitals in my time as in my rotations so um there's always constant you know updates constant new literature constant so it's it's on you to be uh, a lifelong learner so just uh, if anyone has any questions or concerns you can always find me i'm on social media of course or you can reach out to michael uh, it's been great talking about my school and i hope i wish everyone the best